Alright, welcome back to the animation tutorial, part 2. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, I would recommend watching right here. Otherwise, we were animating a bomb bouncing across the screen. So, let's get back to that. Now I want this thing to bounce across the screen, so I'm going to quick draw a wall here. Because I want it to bounce off of a wall too. Because I'm special. So special. Now if you're familiar with doing art and stuff, you might know of something called gesture sketching which in animation that's just called storyboarding or animatics. And you can do this however it makes sense to you, but I'm basically going to just kind of draw out the general motion I want this to go in. It might not go this way exactly, but this is roughly how I kind of want it to move. Now we have a little bit of a conundrum. If we set it to the high and low points just with the pure bouncing animation, watch what winds up happening. It winds up kind of going in like a sawtooth bounce shape instead of a sinusoid like it should. Um, it needs to have a constant horizontal velocity and a changing vertical velocity, which is normal. But we can't really get that very easily. Um, I mean, you could do stuff with like um, guide layers to kind of control this animation, but honestly there's another easier way to do it that's a little bit easier to control using nesting and sub symbols. So, to nest this symbol, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all the frames of the bounce. And I'm going to right click these frames and I'm going to copy the frames, the frames themselves, from the timeline. Now I'm going to use Shift F8 to make a new symbol and I'm going to call this symbol Iron Man because Robert Downey Jr. gets inside the Iron Man suit. Now I'm just going to paste, right click on the timeline inside this new symbol and paste the frames that I had copied before. And look, the bomb is now bouncing inside the Iron Man suit. Now if I go back out to my main timeline, I can drag the Iron Man into the main timeline. And I can set a starting position and an ending position. And then I can tween it. And you can watch as it bounces. Yay. Now, note it doesn't really follow the path that I had originally drawn out, but that's not really that important. Um, all you would need to do to change that would just be change how fast the animation plays. Now I'm just going to make it bounce back, and behold! My bouncing Iron Man bomb, with Robert Downey Jr. inside. So yeah, believe it or not, puppet animation is kind of similar. All it is is really making a bunch of character components, like the arm, the head, the eye, etc., and having a whole bunch of nested symbols and a whole bunch of separate symbols and then just tweening them all together or even animating them frame by frame together and just controlling all the individual parts separately and it looks like a whole character or a skeleton um, the bone tool advertises that it can do this as well but trust me on this the bone tool sucks don't use it oh yeah and one other rule i don't care who you are or how good or how hot you think you are one symbol per layer, no exceptions. If you don't abide by this rule, you will basically kill off any opportunity to edit your animation in the future without having to redo the entire goddamn thing. So don't do it. So now this bomb is honestly kind of boring. I'm going to add a few things to it. I want it to rotate and I also want it to have a fuse and I want it to explode. So I'm going to go inside the bomb first. I'm going to get all the way up inside Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> And I'm going to use this opportunity to animate the fuse. So, I'm going to add a fuse onto this, so I'm going to gear up my yellow. Um, one thing I'd recommend when animating frame by frame, I'd recommend animating in twos, because you're doing a lot less work and it winds up looking snappier. Um, sometimes animating animating in twos means, basically means animating every other frame. I would s just, trust me on this, it looks a lot, it looks nice still for frame by frame, especially if you add in smearing and it saves you so much time because you're drawing half as much. If you imagine your animation ability is a toaster and your animation is your bread, imagine animating in ones as burning your toast. It may be more effort, but it, may, it usually won't look good unless you're really, really good. Oh yeah, one other tip for animating frame by frame. You can actually use the comma and period buttons to cycle through your frames quickly, and that seriously will speed things up. Um, you can also turn on onion skinning down below. There's two kinds. There is um, just standard onion skinning, which will show you the previous frames and the latter frames, depending on how far your range is. And also um, outline onion skinning, which that sometimes might give you a better idea of the detail if you're dealing with like light colors or something that blends into the background really easily. But onion skinning is actually just really useful when you need to like interpolate animation. I'll have a better example later. Now look at my fuse. It is a fusey fuse that burns 
With the passion of a thousand suns, I don't know. Basically, Robert Downey Jr. is now on fire. Now I'm going to make the bomb rotate, and this is actually pretty easy to do. All you got to do is click the, um, you just got to click the keyframe that you want to change, and then if you go over to the properties panel, you can modify the rotation properties. If you set it to a counterclockwise or clockwise rotation, and you set the um, number of rotations to zero, it'll just constrain which direction it, it rotates in. I'm not going to go too much into detail because it's actually pretty simple once you play with it. It's a lot easier to understand by just experimenting with it. Just try it out. Just try setting like, try changing the rotation in a tween, and then try setting the uh, number of rotations down to zero and controlling the clockwise and counterclockwise direction, and just watch what happens. Anyway, rotation is actually also controlled by easing, so if you want it to rotate at a constant rate but change, but move at a different rate, um, you're gonna have to go into and make a custom ease and turn off, use the same easing for all parameters. Um, reset your, you'll need to reset your position parameters though, so that way they match what they were before, but everything else should just be a straight line. All right, so there we go. I don't think I've ever seen something bounce and roll backwards like that, but who cares because it's my animation, I can do what I want. Now I'm going to have this bomb explode at the very end of its motion. Um, so I'm going to make a bunch of new blank keyframes at the end, and one thing I'm going to quick do is I actually have this plugin called Tween to Keys. You can get it from ToonMonkey.com. There's a ton of plugins on there. I seriously recommend them. And I'm basically going to use this to make a bunch of twos, kind of like I had before, it's just more of them. And I'm going to start drawing the fragments of my explosion, and you can see here I'm going to actually start using the, uh, what's it called, the onion skinning. So I'm just going to draw this out. Um, one thing I would also recommend for animation when doing frame by frame, don't try to do everything all at once. Animate and check the motion of one piece at a time. Like right here I'm working on just the shrapnel, I'm not worrying about the explosion. I'll handle the explosion once I got the shrapnel done. Break it up like that because it's a lot easier to make edits when you only have one thing you have to worry about and one thing you need to fix. And yes, for the record, Control-Z is still going to be your best friend on the planet. Also tying into that note, don't ever be afraid to use more than one layer. I'm only using one layer for this because I'm trying to keep it simple. But you can always use more than one layer to animate your stuff, especially to draw it out frame by frame. Don't be afraid of that. As I've said, I've had character animations that had like 64 frames, or 64 layers, for a single character and stuff. So don't be afraid of having more layers. You'll probably wind up with more you can, than you can handle. So just keep your stuff organized, keep your timeline organized using folders. You might want to label them often. And also use the library and keep it organized as well. Use folders on that. If you have library conflicts, you're going to have a very bad time because it can delete portions of your animation. So make sure everything has a unique name. Don't use the default naming like symbol one, symbol two, etc. Uh, some other things I can talk about while I'm drawing this. Um, if you ever have a symbol and you want to break it apart to get at its components again, either like the sub symbols or the fills that are inside, you can use Control B to break it apart. Um, there's also other ways to organize your stuff if you're working with like frame by frame or just want to move stuff around easier. You can make unions, which that actually I don't think has a default control combination, but unions you can basically edit on the main stage. Um, but you move them around like objects, so you can't really tween them. You can also turn on object drawing to get this effect as well. Um, another thing you can also do is if you use Control G, you can make a group, which groups can't be edited before going into them like you can a symbol. It's just that they aren't symbols themselves, so you don't have to name them and they don't wind up occupying space in your library. They're very useful for dealing with stuff in uh, frame by frame if you only need to do use a one-off thing. And I'm going to reiterate this again. Animation is going to depend heavily on how you draw. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a good artist, but you do have to understand the basics of how to draw and the fundamentals behind motion and consistency and stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have like a, oh, a super realistic or a super detailed or a super consistent, nice style, but you do need to understand that you're going to be drawing a lot. And if you start animating, just start early, even if you can't draw and you'll learn how to draw over time. All right, so that bomb and explosion looks pretty nice. There's a little issue though. If you notice when the bomb reaches the top of its arc, it kind of hangs for a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the animation and I'm going to make a new keyframe at the very end and then I'm gonna delete the previous keyframe 
And then I'm going to just resynchronize everything. Just whenever you change the uh, number of frames inside of a nested symbol, um, you're usually going to have to change. You're going to have to resync it. So you can just do that by selecting both tweens and then right clicking and then clicking synchronize symbols. And now you notice that the bomb doesn't really hang as much of it as it did before. And now it bounces and then it explodes and that looks good. Yeah. Okay, so that's about all there is for this tutorial. Now you know the basics and fundamental intels of animation so you can make your own animation and you know, get out there and make me proud and make cartoons and make people laugh and smile or just animate your OCs making the frick frack like the weeaboo trash that you- So yeah, be sure to support us on Patreon if you like this tutorial and you want to see more tutorials like this one. You can help us help you help us all. Also be sure to subscribe and like our video. And I'm really totally plugging our channel at the moment and I hate myself for it. But seriously, thank you all for your support so far. It's been a great help and you're helping us do what we love to do. If on the off chance you're a more seasoned animator, I'm wondering why you're watching this video in the first place, but I actually do have something for you. If you check the description, I have a toolbox full of animation plugins that are up for a bit more advanced users. So go check that out. If you're new, you might want to check it out as well because you might find something in there that's useful for you. There's instructions on how to use each and every one. So thank you all, and we shall see you next time.